Hey, how are you tonight? I gotta find you in my group real quick because I had to run and grab a, a power cord. So, let me make sure. Can you all hear me? I just need to make sure somebody can hear me on here because, oh wow. Look at all the people on. Hello, hello, hello. Cord. Huh? So. Can you all hear me on the live? I am waiting to find out if you all can hear me on this live because I've been messing. Oh, yep, here you find. Awesome. Okay. I'm gonna actually take my glasses off because <clears throat> where I put the computer today, the light was shining right into my glasses. So I am glasses-less. So if I'm coming up at the screen because I can't see, that's what it is. So welcome. We have a powerhouse with us tonight. Um, before we get into what we're gonna do tonight, I'm gonna give you all a couple minutes to get in. And in the meantime, I am going to go back over a couple of the house cleaning things of what's going on with Sharon Hoppy Designs. So what we're going to do is we are on Sunday night, this Sunday night, we are going to shut down the ability to order. Um, one, because I want to catch up on everybody's orders because I'm getting too far behind and I don't think that's fair. So I want to get orders caught up. And then I am redoing the website, completely redoing the website. And then we have several new complete product lines coming out um, after the first of the year. And I need to get product made for ClayCon West. How many of you guys are going to ClayCon West? I will see you all there, whoever's there. And um, we will be debuting our new products at ClayCon West. They will not be available on our website until ClayCon West is over. So those people that are going to ClayCon West are going to see them or get them first. Um, ClayCon West is January, I think, 12th and 13th, maybe 14th. And it's in St. George, Utah. So y'all come out and see me in Utah in January and see our brand new products that we're coming out with. I am so excited. Also, keep an eye on the website because I may be putting sneak peeks up there. I will still be going live in this group, um, showing maybe showing new things, maybe not, but, but at least going live and doing projects in this group still. Um, I'm not going to disappear off the face of the earth. I'm simply not going to have ordering available for um, till after the first of the year. So I see Misty's going to ClayCon. I know a few people that are going, um, and I can't wait to see you all there. Now, tonight, we're also going to do this a little bit different. I am going to be bringing in a guest, a very good friend of mine. Um, we have been collaborating for months on this particular project, on this product. Um, I started to create something and showed her and she was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And so she was like, do this, do this, do this, do this. And with all of her feedback and all of her um, info, we have created this product. So that being said, she's gonna come on, we're gonna chat for a minute, and then your video tonight is going to be Tiffany Helmer from Hobble Creek Pottery. Now, it's gonna run a slight bit different than what I usually do. You know, I usually will do a video and then come in and chat, and then do a video and come in and chat. Hers is one solid video, and I believe it's about 42-ish minutes. So once that video starts, it will play through the, till the end. 
And then Tiffany and I will be coming back on to chat some more. And she has been making some things. I have, this is the back side. I'm not showing you the front side. And in here, I have something also, but I'm not showing it to you because I'm gonna let Tiffany do that. Um, she is, again, doing the video tonight. She has many things out of her kiln, I think just today, um, to show you some finished products of what she has done with this. So, bear with me. Bear with me and let me see if I can pull Tiffany in. I gotta unmute her. Okay, Tiffany, I'm gonna try to pull you in. Oh, there she is. Okay. Do I hear? Can Go you hear me? I can hear you and I don't think I hear an echo. Yay. Yay. Okay, so we have. We can fix my system for that. Yes. So, you guys, in the chat, let me know if you can hear her without um, echo so that I know whether we need to turn the, the mics on or off. So, let me know if you can hear Tiffany. Go ahead. Um, Tiffany, I am going to turn it over to you and let you speak. And let me see if I can hear you. Okay. <laughs> All right, first of all, I've never done a live, so be gentle. <laughs> um, can you hear me okay? I can My first you. time, you guys. Oh, somebody is saying a little garbled. <laughs> Keep going, though, because I'm hearing you loud and clear. Um, all right, first of all, I want to thank Sharon for putting all this together and all her know-how, because when it comes to techie stuff, I'm a fish out of water. It's not my thing. I even want to learn it enough to get me by what i don't know i put my husband through college he's a qa guy and i asked him once if that meant he was um questions and answers and that didn't go over very well but so he gets to since i put him through school with four kids that that geeky butt gets to fix all of my computer issues all right not enough talking <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, I see, um, and guys, her internet, she's where she's at is not quite as clear, so it might come a little blurry and a little less blurry, um, depending, it kind of comes in and out, but that's okay, we're going to bear with this. Um, um, look on YouTube compared to Facebook, though. Do what? How does it look on YouTube compared to Facebook? Okay, uh, YouTubes, tell me, how does it look out there? And if you're still hearing an echo. Okay, I can't hear you. Did you mute yourself? Sharon? Yes. <laughs> okay. So I'm hearing people say there's only a problem when we both talk. And we were both talking, only I was muted. So sorry about that, guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this over to Tiffany so that if she has anything else she wants to say, um, I'm going to let her talk. And then when she's ready for the video to come on, we are going to turn that video on because when we're talking at the same time, that's when the echo is. So I'm going to now mute myself and I'm going to let Miss Tiffany have the controls. Here you go. Okay. Um, it's kind of funny when you have to mute yourself. I don't really have much to, uh, more to say. Um, I think it all in the video. I ramble. So bear with me on that. And yeah, show the video. <laughs> oh, look, we switched sides. <laughs> that was an accident. Okay, guys, this is our first time doing this together. So as Tiffany said, bear with us. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Tiffany off the screen. 
and mute her. We will both be back at the end of this video. Hi Pottery Peeps, I am Tiffany Helmer and this is Hobble Creek Pottery and uh, Sharon and I have known each other for quite a few years and we just get along like a house of fire. Anyway, we've been collaborating on this timber, um, when did we start? Was it August? Anyway, I've been dying to share this and I haven't told anybody um, outside of my family. I did break. <laughs> Sorry, Sharon. <laughs> But they didn't know anybody to tell. So, um, here we are. Isn't this amazing? There is nothing out there like it, because if there was, I'd own it. <laughs> I am from Alaska. I was raised in Alaska. I have all my roots are in Alaska. My husband's family's there. Half of my family's still there. And I go back quite often. I'm stuck in Utah. <laughs> Right now, I'm in the Wasatch Mountains of Utah, which isn't bad, but it's not Alaska. Anyway, I grew up, my grandmother um, bred and trained sled dogs. I, she was an amazing woman. And if I can find a picture of her, I'll post it. I also own two, well, technically, um, I'm kidnapping one. <laughs> um, my son moved in, him and his wife moved into my basement apartment um, to save money to buy a house and they brought their husky, Siberian husky Castiel, and they're not leaving with him. I'm taking him, I'm <laughs> keeping him. I just felt falling in love with that dog. Anyway, um, I also, we have Rinka, who is a Siberian Malamute mix. And they're just, we've had, she is, she's turning 10 in November. Oh my goodness. Ah. Anyway, they're the most amazing breed. I've been around them all my life. So loyal, so fun. Just antics up the yin yang. <laughs> they are a very busy dog, so be prepared for that. It's like having a bunch of um, two-year-olds in my house, <laughs> especially when they get their puppy, um, puppy, what do they call that? Their puppy streak on. It doesn't matter how old they are. They tend to get it on every, usually every morning and every night for a little while. Anyway, I am going to show you how to make a pint. It is a tankard, but bigger, mainly because I wanted to use every little bit of this. This is 7 inches by 12, and if you'll notice, there's plenty of room to cut this down, because most mugs, most of my templates for mug, hand-built mugs, are 6 by 12. Well, that's for the tankard size, are, or 4 by 10. So you can still get the husky in there and all the detail. You might lose a little bit on the side, but I've also, I've been playing with this and I've also made um, platters with this. Hopefully they'll be out of the kiln in time to show for when we go live. Anyway, so let's go ahead and get to making this pint. All right, so I've got, this is some speckled buff by Laguna and it's right out of the bag. I've already compressed it. I rolled it out to a tick under three eighths. And I can't do math. My husband laughs at me all the time, especially when I tell him it's a tick this and a tick that. It's the little line underneath three eighths. I will find out from him what that line actually, I know it has a number, but <laughs> what it actually is. So when I get one of these, when it's out of wood, I will mineral oil it. Uh, we live in Utah, which is a high desert, so the humidity is like zero. Um, that's why we're also known for the best snow, because our snow is powder. It doesn't really stick to anything. <laughs> it's hard to have a snowball fight or build a snowman. Anyway, um, because we don't have hardly any humidity, I take care of my wood. I take care of my rolling pins. Anything that's made out of wood, I will. Even my tabletop here. I will mineral oil it a couple of times a year just to take care of them. But also with the wood, um, just so it doesn't stick because my clay is super, super soft, I am going to throw some cornstarch on it. Now, I have found with cornstarch, when you sprinkle cornstarch on here, if you don't brush it in or not or you don't brush it, all those little dots of cornstarch will actually be texture, which can be super cool. But if you don't want that and you want it to just shine on what 
the texture you're putting in there. Um, just brush those little dots. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and lift this up. And bring over this. Oh, it's so pretty. It is pure art. She put in so many of the elements that I asked her to and went back and forth, back and forth on what we liked and how it would print out. And it is stunning. So I'm just going to go ahead and roll this in with my pony roller. And I will check it. And as you see, I never go one direction. <laughs> I always go more than one direction. I'm always all over the place. So I will lift a corner to see. Oh, it's so pretty. So before I lift it though, I am using the timber as my template. Okay. I'm going to come in here with my wire. Actually, I've got to cut some of this off. Makes it a little easier. I'm going to come in here with my wire and I am just going to cut right along the wood here. Let's take that little corner up. Now, let's see what we got. One of the things, actually, I have this tube, and when I'm making something this big, I kind of want the clay. I, I over roll it, okay? So I'll roll it up on the tube, but I'm going to actually show you. Look at this isn't that just stunning just beautiful oh i just love it so much um i before i do this <laughs> i forgot to get my my sheet <laughs> yes i use the sheet in the studio hold on hey for those of you new to pottery or new to my channel uh this is a pottery tip i will Actually, I should probably double check which way I'm... Yep, okay. Those are my Northern Lights. Those are the <laughs> part that are up. I will come in here with a sheet. This is just a leftover sheet <laughs> that uh, Rinka actually tore with her nails. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's just too funny. I completely forgot that that's... The sheets were like brand new, high Egyptian cotton. <laughs> it's like, I can't throw these out. It was when she was a puppy. So I like um, softening my edge where my rim is with a sheet. You can do this with plastic wrap, but save your sheets because they're, the sheet is heavier weight than the plastic wrap. So I don't get little tiny wrinkles. Um, and it just makes a really, really nice edge. Okay, so once I've done that, see I'm dealing with really thin clay here. Oh god, I didn't even get myself a bat. Hold on again. I'm so prepared. Yeah, and Sharon wants to go live with me. <laughs> when she mentioned that we were gonna do this live, it's like, live? No! I need to be able to edit. <laughs> need to be able to stop the camera and go grab stuff because I constantly forget things. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put this in here. Now, I am not, this is um, so thin. I am not going to, actually, I am going to put it up on a, bring my banding well in here. And then I am going to pull you up a little bit. I'm not going to cut it at a diagonal. I'm just going to score it. 
I don't want to lose any clay for the kind of joint that I'm going to do. So, actually, I've got the trees right there on the edge. I think that will be my outside joint. So I will overlap this one. So I'm just going to score. And the act of scoring is actually thinning this out, which is one of the reasons why I did not want to cut more clay off. I'm just going to hold it there, give it some support. And I am going to come in here. And score this. Where's my thing? I've got, it's not really slippy water. It's just some of the water I've been working with. It's more water than slip, but this clay is so soft. I'm not worried about it. So I'll just wet that one side. I'm gonna see if I can do this toward the camera. Then I'm just gonna come in Just overlap that a little bit. I need to get a bigger tube. And then the one thing I like about the tube, of course, is I can press against it. And then I will bring in my roller and really press against it. And I will blend these two really well on the front here. Get a good connection. Take my tube out, bring in my wooden knife, and then work it, really clean it up on the inside. I'm not gonna clean it up too much right now. I am gonna focus on the top and the bottom. Join those really well because we're going to do something else to this. Those of you who've watched me for a while will probably guess what I'm going to do because I really like to do it. <laughs> All right. Oh my goodness, I don't even have my. Let's see. I actually filmed this yesterday and we were having a major storm our first for the winter and uh, when I look back at the footage it was covered in shadows because of the storm so I'm just going to leave that in there for a moment and I'm going to work on the, the foot now I have this flexi bat that has this great mountain and I just thought it would look really good with this Actually, I also have some green underglaze because I was doing something else. <laughs> so, you just, I don't want to put the clay on there wet, so find a dusty part on your apron. <laughs> and uh, get that off. I'm going to roll this in here. Now, if you, Sharon's got some amazing stamps. Um, and I thought about the stamps last night. I should have used the stamps, but I'd already made a few of these and they're gonna be gifts for, cause my sons don't really ask for pottery much. And they saw these and my husband um, and they all want their own. And so since they all want their own, they all have to be, you know, kind of the same. So I can't do, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that on Christmas morning it's like oh but you got this on the bottom you know how kids are anyway <laughs> and these are adult children all right my kids are all grown up yet they will do that Christmas morning actually I think my husband's the worst so I've got this 
for the bottom. Now, to do the foot, I'm actually going to use my largest cookie cutter, which is um, four, and a half, four and a quarter inches. So I'm going to line that up and cut that out. And go ahead and turn it over and score this. Okay. Bring this back here. And of course, score the bottom. And then I want to think, I've got my Husky right here. So I want to think of how, when it's lifted up and drank out of, what is it gonna look like on the bottom? So, I actually have to think about where I'm gonna put my handle. So if my handle is here, right? Yeah, so my handle's gonna be here. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm doing. So I need to have my mountain this direction. It's not that big of a deal if it gets off. <laughs> I'm not going to lose some sleep over it. So I want to center this as best as I can on here. And I'm first going to just tap this around. And I'm tapping like on this part of my finger. So I'm kind of bending this over the edge. So if you think of a tankard or a um, pint, I always think old world pub, you know, the Germans, the English, Scottish, my brand of people. Um, I want that type of a shape. And I also want a really good connection because this is pretty big. It probably It's gonna probably hold 24 ounces. So I want a really good Connection plus I want a foot. I want it to have that classic tankard foot. This is one way of doing it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and have a sponge ready. So I will dampen my finger with a sponge. I actually didn't even finish. <laughs> Blending that, that's okay, we'll get to it. So I don't necessarily wanna get this wet, especially when I'm hand building, I don't really tend to get wet, but I'll have a sponge, a damp sponge by me that I will put my finger on, just dampen my finger if I need a little bit. So another tip. I got into pottery um, in 1983 in high school and took three years of it in high school because my pottery teacher took me under her wing and gave me her, she called it AP pottery. I didn't get credit for it, but it was, she gave me her free period and I got to go in there and do whatever I wanted my senior year. And then I took a year in college, met my husband at the University of Alaska. We went to rival high schools. And uh, we both grew up in Fairbanks. In fact, one of his best men was an old boyfriend of mine. <laughs> but of course you get married and it's all about him and getting him through school and kids. And so I didn't get back into pottery until 2000. And, and then it was just like, I got back on the wheel, the skies opened up, the angels sang. It was just a religious experience and I have not looked back since. And all right, so what I'm gonna do now is just address that seam down there. You can't see it, of course, in the dark clay. Even if I picked it up, you wouldn't be able to see it. 
I want to make sure I don't leave any score marks, any slip. Granted, I didn't add slip, but any moisture. Just want to address that seam down there. Okay. And then I will come in here and I kind of push down. You can even bring in a tool and give yourself a line there. But I want to make sure it's all blended from the foot, but I want to kind of push it down to give it that flat um, bottom kind of foot that tankards or pints have. And then I'll just bring my finger, my nail on the bat and just kind of smooth. So there's that. So now, <clears throat> the fun part. Let's address the seam. So I just want to kind of, I didn't really blend this down here so well. So I'm just going to blend that. I'm not going to worry about this because we're going to cut it out. Now, those of you who have sewn, if you sew, I'm going to create a dart. But the way that I'm going to do this dart, so I'm going to come up here. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. And I don't get my head in the way. I'm actually going to move you. Nope, that doesn't help. I'm going to come up here, and I'm just going to freehand it. I'm going to cut at a 45 and come all the way down to there. Or, you know what? I'm you can cut it as long or as short as you want. I'm keeping that same angle. And I'm going to cut this side. All the way down. Now keep the start. Okay. So you can see how that's cut. Hopefully. Because it's hard for me, I actually am working on a tablet, and it's hard for me to see the screen. Yesterday it was great, I could see the screen, no problem. The only problem is I had so many shadows in here that my body was shadowing what I was doing because you couldn't see it due to being dark in here. All right, so I've scored both sides, and if you can't get your scoring tool in there, do it with a knife or any old tool. So I'm just gonna wet the one side. And then I'm going to just gently push that together. And a nice thing about this being a groggy or clay, the groggy or bits like to grab each other. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and blend on the inside. Again, I'm not going to worry about the outside right now. And I'm just lightly blending it, okay? Because we're going to add a band-aid. I'm going to take this bit that we took off and I am going to roll it out really thin. And you can't see that. So I'm just going to roll it out really thin. I mean, it's thin, okay? I'm gonna dip it in my water, and I'm going to place it back on the inside, and then I'm going to blend that. We have made a band-aid. And then just smooth that in with my knife. I will spend some more time off camera because I can get carried away. Anytime you're hand building, it's all about cleaning up. <laughs> it's all about um, the finish. And so I will let this go for right now. I'm just going to get it started so that it's not going to come off. And then when I'm done, I will return to it. I invariably return to my pieces anyway, more than once after I finish. Let's see. 
So now I'm going to clean this up. Where is my favorite tool? Oh, there you are. There you are. This is actually one of my favorite tools. So I'll put my hand on the inside and I will blend this to where you can't see it. And the really nice thing about this design that Sharon's done is um, you can do this. You can make hand-built mugs and it um, people can't see like with a rolling pin you know you can tell where the seam is or you highlight the seam but with this you won't be able to tell where the seam even was. My fingers, fingers are your best tools. My students hear this from me all the time. So do the ones who watch me on my YouTube channel. Your fingers are your best tools. They will pick up nuances in the clay more so than anything else. So now <clears throat> I am going to, I want to volume this out. Now, I don't have a lot of clay here, so i got to be careful. Another reason why you want to use your fingers. Don't use, you could use a metal rib, one of the soft ones. But you've got to be really careful here because I purposely, now if you go 3 8 go for it, use your rib. But, like I said, your fingers are going to feel things. That metal rib or the red rib is not going to feel things. And before you know it, you might go through. And I'm not going to volume a ton. I'm just after the shape. I want, I mean, it's good to have some volume, but I am really just after giving this some personality. Come on, it's got a husky on it, you know? And I believe Sharon called it Alaska Wild Nights. <laughs> so, and so let's get a little wild with this. I'm just going to just double check. Look at my shape. See if I like my shape. I think I want to just give it a little bit more here. Maybe here. Okay, so now we're going to talk handles. First of all, I am going to cut this little bit where the seam was off. Sometimes you get a little well, that might have been a little bit too much cut. Okay, let's put some more clay back. Got a little crazy with the knife there. Sure, wait till the end. <laughs> and mess it up. All right. So I'm just going to smooth that back in. This kind of clay is a very forgiving clay, thank goodness. That's better. All right, so now I'm going to talk handles. I'm going to put this back in there just to, it won't be in there long, but it's enough to let the clay, I'm trying to train the clay, right? I already um, pulled a handle. Um, it actually has not been sent out. As soon as I did the slab, I pulled a handle. Uh, those of you, if you want to see how I, um, pull handles or how I do handles. I've got a lot of examples on my um, YouTube channel. But what I'm going to do, this is my classic standard hobble creek handle. So I just cut that at a bevel and I'm going to make a paddle out of it. So I'm going to flatten this out and <laughs> I have a husky hair. Having huskies, you do have a lot of hair, but they are silvery strands of unconditional love. At least that's what I keep telling my husband. So, my uh, grandmother used to comb out her dogs and send the hair to my aunt who would weave it because it's so super soft. I'm not into weaving. I just, we just comb them out on the lawn and then the birds come and get them for their nests. So, all right, so I make 
kind of a paddle, right? See that? And we're gonna talk a little bit about handles. Now, when you're first starting out, um, most potters, when they first start out, the handles are way too big. They come out way too far from the piece and um, invariably they get broken in the dishwasher or they get knocked in the cupboard and they break. So you want to think of your handle as an extension of the mug and you want it as close to the mug as you can. Now this is a pint. This is now, measure it. With the foot, it is now um, seven and a quarter, okay? And it is um, three and a quarter wide. So it's gonna hold a lot of liquid. It's gonna be quite heavy. And something like this, you need to think of the function of, um, so if I were to put my handle here, okay? If I were to put my handle here, boy, that looks good though, doesn't it? It's so cute. And then pick it up, the weight of this handle is gonna, or the weight of this mug and the contents are gonna hit right here. Now, I am getting older. <laughs> and I do actually get a lot of comments from older people that like big mugs, but they don't like using them. They will actually choose a smaller mug because it's too hard on your wrist because that's where it hits the center center of gravity or whatever, physics, this is physics lesson. So when I do large mugs, not just this, but even tankards, some that are even smaller in my tankard that is 12 by six, I will put the handle on upside down. Now what this does, the thicker part of the handle that you pulled is here. And when you pick this up, look where my palm is, okay? This is holding up this mug, all right? And I'm gonna have, so you're not getting a lot of strain on your wrist. Plus, if you'll notice, my wrist is straight, so I'm actually using my arm and my palm. I can even pick this mug up down here and still put all my, get all my fingers in. So, there's your lesson on that. So I'm gonna cut this other part, and I did it straight across, and I'm gonna flatten it out. This is going to actually end up being our thumb rest, too. And I'm going to flip that this direction. So that's actually a pretty, so like from being join, joining it to the mug, actually I'll go ahead and, so for this mug it's um, six and three quarters. So that's actually a fairly small handle for this mug. So I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to attach it at those points from the dart. Okay, so I'm gonna attach this down here and there. I'm gonna put my hand in here because I do, where is it? I like to attach my handles with a dowel so actually, make sure I've got that where I want it. Okay. I'll put the dowel in there. And then I am going to push pretty hard. And I get a good connection with this dowel. Okay. Then I'm going to bring my finger in. Well, I'm not going to worry about it. Let's see here. Let's go ahead and do wiggle that on. And I'm going to, we'll just attach it. So I'm going to address that again. But I'm going to bring in my finger, make sure that this is all really, really smooth. Make sure this is straight up and down. I like this little flip that doing it with the dowel creates. And I will actually accentuate it. Bring in my little tool here, smooth that down, get my finger wet, and I will actually sometimes even push this down because I like that little flip. Sharon likes the swoops. I like them too. 
I like the little flips. Okay, now to address this one here. So I want to bring this down. You can get wild on this type of a handle. I see where I nicked it, where it fell against the bat. So I'm going to grab that really quick. And then we're going to address this top part. So I'm going to make a little coil. I'm going to cut it in half. I'm going to bring this coil and I'm going to pinch the bottom of it. Okay. Again, I do show this a couple of times on my channel. And then I will work this in. I really like the way this. Um, it gives it stability, but it also really makes it feel more like those like pewter um, tankards that you see over in Europe. It gives it that feel. And it adds the stability without adding a lot of weight. Ooh, I wish I could let you guys could feel how light this is. So I'm going to do that underneath. And do it right here too. Amazing the difference a little tiny coil can make. Then I just work that in and smooth it in. And then smooth it again with my brush. This is a cheap makeup brush from the dollar store. So while I've got it upside down, I will address the bottom of this. I know I have a great connection here. I will just basically, I'm looking for, like I just wiped out some score marks. And then I will come in here. Sometimes I'll add a coil if I need to, if I think it needs one. I'll add that little baby coil, but I don't think this one does. So I'm just smoothing it into the clay. Okay, and we will carefully tip this back up. And then I look over that handle, make sure the shape is what I want. I need to lift it, lower it, smooth it. My little swoop or my little flip isn't where I want it, then I will. So you can see, I can fit my whole hand in there, and then that works as a thumb rest. And the weight of this is going to rest on my palm and be lifted by my arm and not all by my wrist. All right, so the last thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna sponge wet. We are almost done with this. I will address the rim. So, a very brilliant potter who, of course, I can't remember the name, but I heard this once and it really stuck with me. There is nothing in the world that is going to touch your lips as often as the rim of a cup. So make sure it's a pleasurable experience. Always address the rim. Make sure it's soft. And then make sure that it's pleasurable to drink out of. By that, I am just cupping it right here. I'm not pushing it out very far, but I'm giving it a little bit of movement out to help direct the liquid, whether it's mead, <laughs> wine, which would probably hold a whole bottle, um, coffee, or heck, ice water. I drink ice tea out of these things in the summertime, but address that rim, direct that water, make it as pleasurable. You want your customers or the people using your pottery to um, 
when their kid or their dog breaks it, they call you up in a panic and it's like, can you make another? Because that was my favorite mug. And I get that a lot. <laughs> so I've even had people contact me after 10 years. Please, please, can you make me another mug? Just like the one I broke. And that's kind of tough to do because I'm using different clays and different glazes. All right. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to round that off. Okay. And then I will put it under plastic, let it sit for a couple of days, and so that all the moisture in the handle, everything I've done to it, um, marries together and they're going to make it, right? No one's going to crack off and divorce each other. So this is what we've made. And I know that, um, I don't know if... Sharon, if you've made stuff with it, you probably haven't. You, you, I know you've been swamped. But I've made a bunch of stuff, so hopefully I'll have them out of the kiln. This is Friday that I'm filming this. Hopefully I'll have everything out of the kiln. That's my goal by Tuesday to show you guys some finished um, wild or Alaska wild nights on the timber. Isn't that just gorgeous? I'm actually going to also make some tiles and do a backsplash downstairs in my um, basement. So anyway, um, thanks for joining me and thank you, Sharon, for this beautiful, be beautiful piece of art for us to play with and make our own. I just so appreciate you and I can't wait to see you at ClayCon West. Yes, I will be there and um, I'll probably be hopefully on a cane or I'll be on a wheelchair or a walker because I get to have a knee replacement surgery on the 15th of November. So Fingers crossed I'll be on a cane. <laughs> so, but I'm going to be there one way or another. I'll be there because Sharon's going to be there. <laughs> and actually Sharon and I met for the very first time. Um, I've been buying her stuff before I met her, but I met her at Clayton West in 2020. And some people you just hit it off with and her and I just hit it off. So we're like-minded souls. Anyway, I hope you can get in the studio and get muddy. And thanks for joining us. And we will see you. I guess if you check me out, I'll see you in the next video. If not, you'll see Sharon next Tuesday. Hey, what do you think of that, guys? Um, what a great tutorial. Loved, loved several of those tips, the handle, everything about it. And I'm going to pull... Tiffany back in here in just a second because um, she has uh, things that came out of the kiln with this design on it that I got to see today. So let me, let me pull her back in here. Whoa. Uh -oh. I got to wait a second. She, she fell off. Come on back. Are you back? Okay. Let me add you in here. Okay, she is back. Let me see if I can hear you now. Can you hear me? Okay. Phew, that scared me. <laughs> Everything went dark. Okay. Are you so handing it over to me now? I am going to put you full screen so that you can show all the wonderful stuff you made. Here you go. Am I full screen? Okay. <laughs> All right. So I put it behind me and hopefully the sun, the sun is just streaming in here, but this one is my favorite. Is it showing up on your end? Nod, Sharon. <laughs> is it showing up on your end? Okay. All right. Whew. Okay. Let me start on this side. So this one was um, done with underglazes and I did a clear satin mat. And there is a reason, and don't know if it's coming across with the video. Um, I'm gonna post some pictures later. With the, the speckled buff by Laguna, the magnesium flecks in the clay look like stars. Um, this one was done with the Mako matte black. Uh, I don't know if you can see the stars. 
but it looks like it gives it some like a 3D. Well, it is 3D, but gives it some more dimensions because the, those magnesium flecks shine. So this one was done with the red. I've got I might this was done with the cinnabar. Okay, let me go back. I jump ahead. So this one was done all in underglazes. So the black velvet on the husky, which resembles Castiel, and the royal blue velvet, and then I did speedball pine green, wiped it back, did white. I think it was a speedball white too. And then I used stroke and coats down here on the musher. And then just kind of blended the colors. I did do on the um, Big Dipper, those of you from Alaska are gonna get this. We did not leave any details out. So um, when you're in Alaska in the wintertime, everybody looks straight up every time you go outside because the Northern Lights, right? And when you look straight up, the Big Dipper and the North Star are directly above your head. So I miss that so, so much. Anyway, I plan to probably gold luster those stars. And I'm going to, the Northern Lights didn't quite turn out. I shouldn't have done them over the royal blue. I did do like some purple and green and that kind of thing. Um, if I do this again with the underglazes, I will leave the royal blue off and just do the colors. But if I hit them, I think if I hit them with some mother of pearl, get some shine. So this one, I was trying to do Rinka. I should have stuck with the underglazes, but I did Cinnabar and uh, Clayscapes Cream, which is one of my favorites. Those of you who have watched my kiln unloadings and so forth, you know I'm a big fan of that one. And the purple for the mountains and so forth is um, grape opulence that I'm really in love with. And then I did the matte black by Mako. Did the seaweed and um, smoky Merlot and indigo float on the Northern Lights. And yeah, I the more and more, I, I wasn't so happy with it when I did the kiln unloading, but the more and more, my husband's already grabbed it. So he's he's a fan. So, and then this one's gonna go in for a refire. Um, I did the the black Mako um, matte, black matte on this, and you can see the magnesium flex cream again. But I used the the Northern Lights turned out really cool on this one. I used um, the base color was Milky Way by Opulence. And on a Tree of Life witch hat that I recently did, came out awesome. I don't think I got enough glaze. So I'm gonna throw some more glaze, fire it again. And these guys, I um, was kind of done doing all the, those of you who know me know I like to dip glazes. So this is Clayscapes Shadow Blue, which is one of my favorites. I did add black and cream under the glaze. and I absolutely love it's not coming off on the picture how pretty this actually is and the magnesium flecks in the clay are really showing up I do plan to play of course I'm going to play with this um so all right this one so Sharon um did a test tile and there were some mistakes in the test tile and it was a really big one and she sent it to me anyway. So I'm the only one who has that, unless you guys can talk her into making them bigger. So I made a big platter. And this is actually her template for, she knows the name of her templates, I don't. It's the one that has the dividers in it, but I just used the template and made this. And I did it the same way I did that one before with the um, um, shadow blue. And that's her roller in there too for the texture on the border. Oh, we're getting glare now because the sun. Um, okay, one other thing I wanted to touch on. Let me just put that back up there. So I'm calling it a pint and I did measure how much this holds. And it holds 30 ounces, you guys. So that's a lot, but because I made it so thin, it actually doesn't weigh more than some of my others. And um, I've been nursing a monster drink all day on this. Um, I did look up 
because I've heard, you know, tankards and pints, I always thought a pint was bigger, but when I looked at my measuring thing, a pint was, what, 16 ounces? So, but in Ireland and England, or like in the UK, a pint is 20 ounces, okay? So this is two beers, <laughs> two, two Irish Guinness, right? So, um, Okay, it looks like she froze up a little Elks, bit. Elks, salmon, um, an eagle, maybe, maybe some deer, you know, um, swap out the husky and change the scene down here. And let's have a whole series, okay? <laughs> All right, Sharon, back to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Tiffany. Okay, oops, let me, let me. Let me go in here. Okay, so I'm gonna take these off for the glare. I There was a brief moment where her video froze up, so I'm not sure exactly what she said. Um, however, I will tell you that, oh, she's trying to come back in. She, she got knocked off. Um, this tooled timber is live on the website under tooled timbers. We call these tooled timbers because we tool on the timber. So it is um, Alaska Nights, the sled dog. So as she mentioned, we are going to do a series of these um, with different um, ideas inside. So this is um, sled dog, Alaska Nights um, series number one. And... I did create, and I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. I haven't even um, fired it yet. You probably can't see it. But when you take these timbers, you don't have to just do a mug or whatever. You saw that she did platters and plates, and mine is this big. And then I also, <laughs> I also created... The start, the start of a mug, I have not even put the bottom on yet, but you can see mine's not quite as tall. Just to show you the versatility that I did leave space on these tooled timbers, top and bottom, so that you can um, make it smaller if you want or larger. Now, I will tell you that Tiffany's, Tiffany's, she call it a pint, a tanker. It holds 30 ounces. That would be called a Texas pint, y'all, because everything's bigger in Texas. So Texas pint, Tiffany. Um, again, this is live on the website under tooled timbers. We, Tiffany and I, are going to do a lot more collaborating. So if you loved her presentation, throw some love in those comments for her. And uh, Tiffany, again, thank you so much for collaborating. Can't wait to see you in Utah. Um, everybody, I can't wait to see you in Utah. Everybody that comes out, Alabama Clay Conference. Um, I do have several people coming out to ClayCon that are gonna, is going to jump in and help me. Um, Melissa just offered to jump in and help me at Alabama. I'm going to take it. And... Um, Texas, Texas met Utah tonight. So thank you everybody um, for joining Tiffany and I. And if you want to see a lot more of this, be sure and put that into the comments. And this out of the box dynamic duel will be back. So see you all. Oh, look, the hand. It's the hand. It's the Mr. Wilson hand. Um, let's see. When does the order get turned off? I can't, uh, Lisa, it will be this Sunday night at midnight. We are turning it off. Um, I really, I really need to get orders caught up. 
I really didn't anticipate getting hit as hard as we did with orders in this last week since we announced we were going to turn it off for a little while. So um, all I can tell you is please, please, please um, be patient with us. We are turning ordering off. That is our income. But we are turning that off because we feel we need to get totally caught up to, to give you the best customer service that we can and to get ready for ClayCon West with our brand new products. Oh my gosh, wait. <laughs> you know how my brain does not shut off, kind of like Tiffany's. Wait till you see what's coming out after the first of the year and debuting at ClayCon West. You will not want to miss this. It is, it is different than you've seen everywhere and hopefully it will stay different than you see anywhere. Um, and we will see you. I will still be doing lives. I will see you next week on the live. Thank you all for coming.